Right, so we've got the wheel off, and this is what you should be left with. Brakes, disc, uh, and your drum. Obviously this is your shock absorber for your car. And if we come in a bit, what we're changing is this thing here. This thing here, this is called the steering rack. And the bit we're changing is this bit here, which is called the boot. This is the, or the rubber boot that you get, you can buy them. And normally this is what's wrong with your car, you always get these on MOT failures and stuff like that. This is where these normally come up. Because they normally break on the top where you can't see it, not underneath where, if you're under your car you'll see it. Um, so what we're going to do now is, we'll, we'll, we're going to unbolt this. Um, and basically you have this nut here. There's this nut here. You'll need a 19 inch wrench. You put that on there like that. And it'll move. You'll have some play because this is a rubber joint here which has play which lets the, the joint move and you pull it up towards you and what I normally do is I lube it properly proper give it some proper get that going in there and leave it for a few minutes to work and then I'll start messing, messing around with it see if it will actually start to loosen up and sometimes it's really easy sometimes it's really hard that's why I use the rubber mallet if I need to sort of pry it a little bit give it a bit of a wake up call and you can start giving it a little bit And then it's loose. And then you just turn it around. Now what I've realised with the Subarus especially, actually this could probably work on any car, as you turn the nut away from the body you'll see this gap starts to appear. I don't know if you can see that on the video but there's a gap now between the bolt and the actual arm. So if you keep turning this, you'll actually unbolt without taking the nut off and without taking the retaining arm off the car which is a bit of an issue on Subaru if you take these off without the proper equipment which I don't have you, it's practically impossible to get it back on again so that's a no-no in my book so look for alternative ways of doing this and this is the alternative way so you just turn this and you can see this is getting bigger and bigger and, it, and what you do is you turn the wheel as you turn the wheel if this wheel turns and you just start, start the car with it so as you turn the wheel this will be even easier to get off now This should go to maximum torque turn, and then you should be able to move it off. It starts to get a bit tough. Get your moving wrench onto there, and so just start turning it like that. You'll, you'll feel it give. And when it does that, then it, you, can, you can actually take it off. It's getting a little bit. See that how they give? It just gives way. And then you turn it and it should just come off. A little bit of persuasion. There you go, like that. And you don't even have to touch this then. You don't have to mess about with it, it won't leak. But normally they leak if when you take, try to take these off because they're compressed with loads of lube inside and the lube tries to escape as you try to 
get it off here and whatever. And that's that bit off. Now, next bit is obviously to get this nut off. Uh, again, when you lube, we'll do the job. And... Use one wrench to hold the actual bar in place. And another one, I only use the loop, get it inside, and start turning. And once you've loosened that up a bit, it should just come straight off. There you go. Nearly got it off. Oh, don't need that. There we go. That bit off. Now get your, your and we just do the jerry clip here. And I try, always try to reuse the clips, especially if the cars are an original, because the clips are so good. These are from Japan, these clips. And they're so great, they don't rust, look at that, rust free. This car's like 1998, you know. That's ridiculous. It's a 14 year old car. And there's no rust on the clip. You get that from England, it fucking rust. So we chuck that over there. And then we'll just yank this out now. With a scoop, now what you gotta be careful with is a lot of people, they just go to pull, yank this out with all their might. But you don't need that much strength. You just need a bit of brain. And what you need to do is, we need to get under the car to get rid of the other clip, which is a twisty clip. It's uh, it's located just. Pull it out a little bit so you can see it. But it's located just there. If you go down a bit, you'll see it. And basically, that clip you just undo it. You just, you just unpry it with your hand, and it will come away. Keep it on that side of the car, and then this will just twist out. And we'll come back to you when I've done that. Right, so we've got that off, that clip off now. And basically with the with the three brew ones, I think all CVs are all, all the boots are like this, but they have like a spindle inside them. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Mm -hmm. And basically that spindle, you, you turn it and it will go in like just like that. Click over the finger, it'll go straight in. And to get it off is exactly the same format. So if you turn it as you take it off, it actually just comes off. But you'll see a lot of videos, which I've seen. A bit of lube need on there. Let's spray the whole arm, make it nice and lubricated. A lot of the videos you'll see on YouTube, which I've seen, it, they're not very good at showing you this bit. Because you just see the person trying to yank the thing off. Whereas if you turn it, as you pull it, it literally just comes off really, really easy. Look at that. Two seconds, see that? And that's where it's broken on my one. Bloody rubber crap. So next is to lube all this up. A lot of people tell you to clean it first, but me, I just slap the lube straight in there. Nice and thick. And what you do, you move that around. Move the joint around like that. Stuff that in there. Make sure it's nice and compact with lube. Make sure the joint is moving freely and you'll probably find your joint actually has got quite a low amount of lube so throw loads of grease in there don't be afraid it'll only do it justice it'll only make it go longer without getting problems in the future that shit looks all right and then what i do is a oh missing retaining nut there should be a retaining nut back there but it's not on there i don't know why that is I don't know if you can see that, but back here, uh, if you follow my screwdriver, but all the way back here should be a retaining nut on here. And you see how it's missing? So that should be on there, but I don't know who worked on the car before, but they didn't obviously put that back, which isn't that good, but yeah, I guess it's not a big deal. And after you've done that, then what you do is you get this bit here. This is the new one, obviously. And again, same format, you find the end, and then you just turn it in. And this turning motion, 
gets it straight on there. Yeah, fluffing around, getting yourself like you smoke. It's going straight so on. And then once you get past that little bit there, it should just go blog all the way back to the jib into the boot line. And what you might see is as you do this, you might move a lot of the grease at the joint away from the joint. And what you want to do, once you get that around that bit there, get your brush, plenty your lube, and chuck some around there. Like that. Just to make sure it's proper done. And then we put that over the top, push that in. There's two parts here, you'll see the exposed bit here, which obviously you don't want to expose, you want to keep that covered up with the CV boot, like that. And then what I do, I put the clip back on, over the top. Use my gator grips. Grab that nice and tight. Door. And that should be pretty secure. And what I do is because the kit you get will probably come with crappy plastic ties. I just add it as an extra secure measure for the for the CV boot uh, for the um, rat gator. Just extra precaution really. Don't need to do it, I just do it because I want to make sure I don't bloody move. We tighten them up in a minute, I'll whip it on the opposite side underneath so you can't actually see where it is. And uh, now we're just going to go underneath and basically push that end onto the other side, wrap the tie back round, same procedure, use the longer um, cable tie on the opposite side, we bolt back up and that's it, all done. So, um, give me a second, I'll be right back from underneath the car and we'll finish off. Right, so we've uh, finished um, connecting up the CV boot, uh, the um, Serum Rat Gator boot. That's on there now, plenty of grease in it, lovely and snug, lovely and new. And now we've got to get this crap back together again because we didn't take off the actual arm on the left. So. You've got to try and match it up a little bit. Make sure the wheel's fully torqued, like that. So it's fully moved, otherwise this is not going to work. So you've got to hold this wheel to the left, and then it should just go back on with a little bit of... Oh, actually before we do that, I forgot the nuts. Yeah, that would have been a mistake and a half. That would have been funny. First put your retaining nut on, and forget the retaining nut. Once we get that back on, and you'll see it'll actually start to get the bits height from where it was before originally. So you, you don't force it, you just leave it there because that's what exactly where the position was for the car in its original state before we started messing around with it like this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to find a 